This is uh, this is called a pallium, um, and it's uh, bestowed on uh, the, the new archbishops uh, who um, uh, assume responsibility for what they call metropolitan territory. And so when I became Archbishop of uh, Milwaukee, I then, on uh, June 29th, this is the Feast of St. Peter and Paul, had to go to Rome, and then the Pope bestows this uh, upon you. So it's like, it's really like main stage world Catholicism. <laughs> and it was at, uh, literally, it, it's at the ball, if you ever see Midnight Mass and you see the Pope celebrating under the ball, the Kino of uh, St. Peter, that's where we, we go, we kneel down before him, and the new archbishops in the world receive this. And it's lamb's wool, and it's made, um, it's made, it's shorn, they shorn the, uh, the year old lambs, the sisters of St. Agnes in Rome. And St. Agnes, of course, is the uh, early martyr of the church that's depicted with a little lamb in her and You know what? Uh, it was kind of like my friend Bob Barron. I'm sure, sure some of you have uh, watched Catholicism, and uh, uh, um, Bob and I will talk, and Bob will oftentimes say, you know, he says, when we ask somebody, about Jesus being the lamb, you know, they kind of think, oh yeah, he's that cute little, that he's that cute little, um, uh, the, the pig is that cute little animal that's, you know, that kind of runs around. No, no, no. It's the lamb that is sacrificed on the altar. That's the lamb. You know, it's the lamb who gives his life. You know, not this cute little, uh, cute little fuzzy <laughs> lamb. It's the lamb whose blood is going to be given for us. That's the lamb. So, it, it, and when Agnes is depicted with the lamb, she's depicted in, uh, in terms of the sacrificial nature of her, her martyrdom. And so she's depicted with the lamb. So they take the year old lambs, they, they take the wool off of them, and they make these, literally for the new uh, archbishops all throughout the, the world. Those, uh, those, these collars are placed down in the confessional of St. Peter. So when you take a look at the Baldacchino, you get a chance to go to Rome. Right underneath Baldacchino. Baldacchino is the tomb of St. Peter. And according to Maria Guarducci, who is a wonderful uh, archaeologist, there is more proof that those in the, in the esophagus, the, uh, is the bones of uh, St. Peter, than there is proof of Tutankhamun being in, in the tomb of Tutankhamun. So just to let you know, uh, you know in terms of the fact that sometimes people throw those out. No, no, no. This is, this is it. So they take these. They have basically these collars, these overlays, and they place them down in the tomb. And then on the feast of Peter and Paul, his feast that's celebrated uh, in Rome, they're brought up and then they're put on the new archbishops of the world. If you notice, one side doesn't have a pin. And the reason that side doesn't have a pin is in, in the old days, the pins used to be attached to the vestment, and so it would constrict the, the, the celebrant. So the one pin on the one side uh, was there was so that the the bishop could use the, the extend the hand for the blessing, so it wouldn't be you wouldn't be pinned down to the vestment, you know, trying to basically get it, get it up. But now they're ceremonial. They used to actually pin to the vestment itself, but now they just kind of pin to the outlet. And they're usually given as a as a gift. Like these pins were given to me as a gift by the two other archbishops who uh, consecrated me as a bishop when I first became uh, or ordained a bishop by Cardinal Francis George. So. Uh, so that's what uh, these things. This underneath is a pectoral cross, obviously, which all the bishops wear. If you notice, the bishops wear the chain. Sometimes the chain is kind of broke across. Sometimes they're in front. Well, on the end of the on the end of the uh, that chain is a pectoral cross. The one that I wear inside is uh, given to me by John Paul II uh, in uh, my first uh, limited visit. This one was uh, it was given by uh, Benedict the uh, sixteenth for my last. Uh, I'm going to visit. So this is this is from from Benedict. So that's pretty. You know the mitre. You know that's kind of a, the ceremonial uh, dress of basically leader and prayer, as well as the shukeno, which is a pink little beanie that I wear. <laughs> a little pink beanie. That's uh, that's also kind of in terms of leadership and prayer. You can see that abbots wear black, uh, cardinals wear red, uh, archbishops and bishops wear pink, and if if this were white, we'd all be on our knees because then we would be here. So, uh, it's a, and of course, then there's the crozier. A great little story with the crozier. The crozier uh, basically is a, um, it's the shepherd's staff. And obviously, um, uh, a bishop is uh, a shepherd, so he, he's supposed to be guiding. Well, thanks for the prop. Thank you. <laughs> he's supposed to be guiding.
guy, you know, obviously a guy who can cheat, that's what the, 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 the crook says, and he's also, it's used to protect uh, the sheep. I was doing a, a mass at um, uh, for a priest, actually celebrating the 75th anniversary of a priest. Wow. Priests are named at tw uh, 26. This guy was 101 years of age. Wow. Wow. Last <laughs> well, the year before, we celebrated his 100th birthday, and someone says, Hey, well, why do you celebrate his 100? He was in good health and stuff. Why are you celebrating his 100th birthday? Why don't you just wait to celebrate his 75th the next year? And I said, well, you know how people tell you you should live every day as if it's your last? <laughs> when you're 100 years of age, you live. <laughs> so, uh, so he, he kind of celebrated the Mass with me. And it was really one of those country, chur uh, country churches off of Prescott. Uh, and the church itself would only hold about uh, 300. It was relatively basically a small church. But it was, and it was a Friday, um, uh, it was a Friday afternoon. It was like uh, an 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock Mass. And the high school band was was out there and everything for this uh, this anniversary. And, and I you know I figured a few people would be there, but no, the whole church was jammed. The choir block was jammed. People were standing around, and there were people there that literally um, re received. There was a, a daughter, a mother, and her grandmother, who were all baptized by this priest. Wow. So you can't even think in terms of that. So they're all baptized by this one, one priest, so they all receive their, you know, a lot of sacraments. And that's the way the whole church was just filled this relationship of uh, this priest who had been uh, kind of this wonderful sacramental presence uh, in the life. And of course, at the end of Mass, you know, just like every priest does, I, I did myself, I walked down the back of the, back of the, uh, the church and was greeting people. And everybody was talking about a great time it was, what a great aspect, you know, this is wonderful, he's a 100th birthday, and isn't a tribute to him, and we were all saying yes, and they were saying thanks Bishop for coming, and I said, oh no, it, it's a privilege, and the last couple, the last two individuals coming down was a, a mother and her little daughter, and you know, the, the daughter was in that, that, that typical little girl, she was about four years old, a little girl with the, the like, fluffy dress type of thing, and the big eyes type of thing, she was accompanying her mom, and of course, I was talking to my mom, and I was talking about what a you know, a wonderful event this was, and I said yes, and the little girl was fine. Actually, it was this, this crocher. She's, she's looking at the crocher, and she's looking at it up and down type of thing, and uh, finally, she can't take it any longer. She said, Bishop, Bishop. <laughs> and I looked down, and I said, yeah, honey, what is it? And she looked up, and she says, uh, could I ask you a question? And I said, sure, honey, what is it? And she pointed, and she says, have you ever killed anybody with that? <laughs> Mr. Mother steps back and says, what's this homicidal maniac? <laughs> and of course, uh, of course, I knew immediately, I knew what, what it was. You know, I, I, you know, I looked down at her and I, I, you know, I, I said, no, honey, I, I've never killed anybody with this. And I said, although I didn't tell her I wanted to. <laughs> but, but, I, but I knew what happened. What had happened was there was an enterprising individual who was um, a religious education catechist who said, hey, the bishop's going to be here, and started to go through the various symbols. And one of the symbols was obviously the crozier. And she was talking about how the crozier was used to protect the sheep against the wolves, you know, to bop them over the head, you know, to, and to keep them. And in her little mind, you know, she wanted to know if I'd ever killed anybody. <laughs> but let me tell you, I'm prepared to do that if necessary <laughs> to protect you. <laughs> so that's part of the role of the, of the bishop. Well, God bless all of you. Now you know all, my, all the trappings. <laughs> let us stand.